Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Today, I'm super excited to introduce two new products from the Ubiquiti Ultra line. The first piece of equipment that we saw in the Ultra line was the UK Ultra or the Swiss Army Knife Access Point. But now that line is growing. And the first one that I'll introduce is the Cloud Gateway Ultra. This has multi gigabit WAN and we could do more than one WAN connection. We could add a second one. If we have the Unify LTE, that would count as a third WAN connection. Now the Cloud Gateway Ultra only runs Unify network and it could do one gigabit per second routing with IDS and IPS turned on. For the IDS and IPS, we have 35 different categories that we could choose from, which is the same as the UDMSE and the UDM Pro. If we take, for example, the UDR, it only has 11 different categories. The Cloud Gateway Ultra has four one gigabit RJ45 ports and one of those could be remapped to our WAN. This could also hold up to 30 network devices, so either switches or access points and up to 300 clients. The price point on this is $129 USD. The next device that we're going to be taking a look at is the Unify Switch Ultra, which features seven one gigabit PoE plus ports, and we could power this switch up a few different ways. On the back of the switch, we have an RJ45 PoE plus plus input. So if we use that, we're going to be getting 42 watt PoE availability. Now we also have a 60 watt power adapter, which will give us 52 watts. And then we have a 210 watt power adapter, which will give us a 202 watt power availability for our PoE ports. I'm going to be using the 210 watt power supply as I'm going to be pairing this up with the Cloud Gateway Ultra. Now for whichever way you're going to be powering up, there comes a different price point. If you're just using PoE++, it's $129 USD. If we're using 60 watt with the power adapter, it's $159. And if we're using the 210 AC adapter, it's $229 USD. Now this switch is going to pair up very nicely with the Cloud Gateway Ultra. I will be using this switch quite a bit, like I said, with cameras. They will be in the future coming out with a utility box for it for the outside, somewhat similar to the USW flex box. Also for mounting, we have our standard bracket, which we could mount to the wall, but it is also magnetic. So if we want to put it on a filing cabinet or just stick it to the side of a rack, that will work perfectly fine. Now there are some things that the Switch Ultra doesn't do, and we'll go more into detail when we get it into our controller. And that's what we're going to do right now. Now I've opened up the Unify Network Controller on my phone and you can see a new device has been found and that's the Cloud Gateway Ultra. We're going to do the initial setup on my phone. So we're going to adopt the switch and we're going to adopt the UK Ultra access point. After that, we're going to move to my computer. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click on setup. All right, now we need to go step by step and it's going to give it a name. So it's saying Cloud Gateway Ultra. I'm just going to leave it at that as I'm fine with it and I'm going to press next. Now it's testing out the speed limit and I have a three gigabit connection going into this currently. And our speed test results come back at about 2300 megabits per second and that WAN interface is 2.5 gigabits per second and we'll press next. Now it's setting up the Unify OS. It will maybe do a firmware update and then it will complete. Once that's complete, we need to adopt the devices. And you can see that it is doing a firmware update. So it's saying about five minutes and 15 seconds. Once that's done, we'll be back. The firmware update is now completed and we can see at the top that there's two devices ready to be adopted. I'm gonna click on adopt. We could also go over to our devices and see that they're adopting in there. So we have the USW Ultra 210 watt and then the Swiss Army Knife Ultra. Once these are done adopting, we're gonna head over to my computer and then start looking at some of the settings. Now I've logged into the Cloud Gateway Ultra and you could see that we have the Unify Network Controller and then we could install Innerspace on here. And what Innerspace is, it's kind of a local version of Unify Design Center. I do have another video about that and I'll put that down in the description below. But let's click in the Unify Network Controller. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to the settings wheel and we're gonna change this to be dark mode. So I'll click on settings, we'll go to system and then we'll go over to dark mode and we'll apply the changes. Now this dashboard is gonna look like any other Unify OS dashboard. We have our Cloud Gateway Ultra at the top you could see the uplink is 2.5 gigabit per second. The switch is connecting at one gig and so is the access point. If we click on the Cloud Gateway Ultra, we're gonna see the port manager and the overview, insights, and then the settings. Clicking on the overview again, if we go to the port manager, and if we want to create a second WAN on here, we would have to go back to our settings. The port that we would put in our secondary WAN is port four, and I'm gonna do that because we're gonna do some policy-based routing. 
So let's go down over to the settings, click on our internet, and then we could see secondary WAN. Currently it's disabled, but if I hit this drop down menu and we'll click on port four to enable it and press apply changes. Now I'm gonna connect my secondary WAN in there and we should see it come up. I'm just gonna have this failover only not distributed because that is for low balancing. Now I have the secondary internet connection plugged in and we could see it at 192.168.10.10 and my primary is 192.168.2.41. What we need to do, we need to create a couple networks. So we'll click on networks. We have our default that's 192.168.1.0. We're gonna create a new virtual network. I'm gonna call this one guest and then we'll uncheck auto scale and we'll just leave it at 3.1 and then the VLAN ID will be three and we'll check off isolation so that the guest network can't talk to anybody else. And the last network that we're gonna create is an IoT network. We're gonna uncheck auto scale. I'll leave it at 192.168.4.1 and I'll put the VLAN ID of four and then we'll press add. Now, one thing you can't do with the USW Ultra is do aggregation ports. So we'll click on the switch. We'll go over to the port manager and I'll click on two different ports. If we scroll down and we try to go to manual in the operation mode, you could see that it's grayed out. We can't change it at all, so we can't do aggregate links. That's not a huge deal to me. As I already said, I'm gonna be using this as a camera switch and I don't need those aggregate links. Now let's test out the policy-based routing. For this video, it's gonna be pretty simple. This computer currently is on my main WAN and I'll show you that by going, what is my IP? Now you can see here that this IP ends in 134. I'm gonna go ahead and set this up as a traffic route and I'm gonna route myself to the WAN two and we'll get another IP. So all we need to do to do that is go over to our settings and then we're gonna to go to routing. Now we have traffic routes. I'm gonna want all of my traffic to go over it or you could specify what you want. So by domain name, by IP address and port, or you could also do by region, but we want all my traffic for this computer to go down WAN two. You may want something like this if you have a VoIP network and you want the VoIP network going down your WAN two all the time and your data traffic going down WAN one. So we're gonna go to devices and network and select the device. The device we're gonna have pushed through is Mac Telecom, which is this computer. Now we're gonna select the interface as well. And if you set up a client VPN, you would see that in these interfaces. So something like NordVPN, if you wanna route a network through it, this is the way that you would do it. But we're gonna go to secondary WAN and I'm gonna say Cody's computer through WAN2. Once I do that entry, I'm just going to do an IP config space release and then a renew, and we should be on that WAN2 connection. Now I haven't refreshed this page, but once we refresh, we should see a different ending IP address there. So let's go ahead and refresh. And now you can see that it changed to 62. So we are going down WAN2. And that was very, very simple to set up. Now, another benefit to the Cloud Gateway Ultra, which I talked about in the beginning, is our suspicious activity. So if we go over to our security and then we look under general, we have our suspicious activity and we could go over to advanced. It's going to select the networks. By default, it will take all of them or you could edit which ones you want it to work on. So this on the back end is running Sericata but we could look at the detection sensitivity and then go to customize. We could see everything that we could check off. Right now it's 17 out of 35 and 35 is the max. That's currently what's on the UDM Pro and the UDM SE. If we look at something like the UDR, it only has 11 different customizations. So for suspicious activity, this blows the UDR out of the water. Now I always recommend having notify and block on and on high, and we could also create some internal honeypots. So I'm gonna do one for each one of my networks. And then we have ad blocking, which is the exact same on any other Unify OS console. We could click on it, select the networks we want it to run on, and then we have DNS shield. So DNS shield is DNS over HTTPS. I'll put this on auto, which will use Cloudflare and it will also use Google and we'll apply the changes. We can go over to the gateway and we could see some things here. So we could see the traffic that's been going through and we could see our filtering. There's really not gonna be anything on this network right now as I've just started using it. But if we wanna see where our traffic is going, we could go to geo. And currently I have some stuff going to United Kingdom for some reason, and then most of it is in North America. If you need to block a country, you could do it right from this page. So we could say Iceland, click on it, and then we could block them right here. If you wanna unblock them, you could do that as well. 
But when we blocked a country, you could see these little lines going through them. Now let's do some testing. They say that we could do one gigabit routing with IDS and IPS turned on. So we'll do a speed test to see if we could get out to the internet and reach those speeds. And we'll also do an internal test going through open speed tests that I have running on my Zima board. But right now we have nothing turned on, so suspicious activity is off. Let's first run a speed test with it off. With the suspicious activity off, we are getting 679 down and 944 up. Now let's try an internal test to open speed test. We'll go ahead and press start. Now with open speed test, I was getting 903 down and 987 up. Now we need to turn suspicious activity on and try that again. So I'm going to click on advanced and we're going to have this on as high as possible with notify and block and press apply the changes. Now bringing up the speed test again, we should see similar results to what we were doing before if it is true that I could route at a gigabit. Now for whatever reason, we are getting a much higher download when we did have suspicious activity turned on to high. So we are getting 921 down and 944 up. Let's go ahead and we'll do that internal test with open speed test. I'll press refresh and then we'll start the test. And we were getting 924 down and we were getting 989 up, which is pretty much the exact same when it was turned off. Now, the last thing that we're going to take a look at is the VPNs. And this could do any single VPN that the UDM Pro could do, as well as the UDM SE. We have our teleport, we have our VPN server, which we could do WireGuard, OpenVPN, or L2TP. We have our VPN clients where we could do WireGuard or OpenVPN. This would be used with something like NordVPN to route your traffic through there. And then we have site to site VPNs. But the biggest one to me is the magic site to site that is done under the site manager. So let's take a look. Now under site manager, I'm gonna do site magic. And this is where we could connect a couple consoles together with a few clicks. I'm gonna locate my UDMSE, which has a public IP, as well as this new gateway. Now the next steps, we need to select the subnets that we wanna talk between these two for the site to site VPN. On the Cloud Gateway Ultra, we'll select the default, and then on the Mac Telecom SE, we'll do it the 64156. Once we do that, we need to press connect and the VPN will be. Now you can see that we have these green lights that mean it's connected. Let's bring open a command prompt, and I'm gonna to try to ping the subnet of 10.100.10.1, and we should be able to. Now I'm gonna type ping and then 10.100.10.1. And you can see that we are getting replies. So this site to site VPN is now that's going to be it for this video on the cloud gateway ultra as well as the switch ultra. And would I recommend both of these products? Well, I 100% would the cloud gateway ultra comes in at a great price at $129, which is really a steal. If you're only looking to run unified network controller on it, this is all you would need. I can see people with a lot of remote offices taking full advantage of these. With the Cloud Gateway Ultras, we could tie them all together using Site Magic, and we have the full suspicious activity. Now, like I said at the beginning, the Switch Ultra is going to be perfect when they come out with that outdoor utility box. This will be my go to camera setup for when I'm doing it for garages or for gates or in barns. Let me know what you think about both of these products down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon.